The name of this outstanding scientist is more often connected only with physics. You may remember the well-known rule of Lentz and the Joule-Lentz law. Though it is not widely known, Heinrich Lentz was also a brave traveler and a talented cartographer. Heinrich Lentz was born on February 12, 1804, in the Estonian city of Dorpat, the present Tartu. His father, Christian Heinrich Frederick, was a senior secretary of the city magistrate. His mother, Louisa, was a housewife. In the private school Heinrich entered at six, he was the best pupil. Later, while attending a classical school, he was seriously engaged in natural sciences, mathematics, and classical languages. He was also fond of ancient culture, an interest that stayed with him for the rest of his life. When Lentz was 13, his father died. The family lost their breadwinner, and his mother was hardly able to maintain Heinrich and his younger brother, Robert. Lentz graduated from gymnasium with excellent results, and in 1820, he entered the Department of Physics in Dorpat University. The following year, he changed to the Department of Theology, as pastors had a bigger income than physicists. Lentz was still interested in natural sciences. Together with theology, he continued to study physics and mathematics. Two years later, due to the patronage of his mentor of physics, Heinrich traveled around the world on board a ship that was sailing under the command of Captain Otto Katzabu. During three years of traveling, he wrote about things he found useful to the world. Researching the depth and saltiness of different parts of the ocean, Lentz invented the instruments for taking water samples in different depths and for temperature measurement. Upon returning to land, Lentz left the university and for one year worked on the data he gathered from the expedition. At age 22, he brilliantly defended a doctoral thesis at the University of Heidelberg. He was elected adjunct or junior scientist of the Department of Physics in St. Petersburg Academy of Sciences. In 1827, Lentz finally moved to St. Petersburg and started serious research in the field of chemistry and physics. He didn't get the funds from the government, so he had to spend his meager income on experiments. His main source of earning was lectures on physics. Having moderate temper and a certain sense of humor, Heinrich soon became popular among students. His colleagues respected his diligence and indefatigability. It seemed as everything was perfect, but after two years, he left his comfortable life and went on a trip to Mount Elbrus in the Caucasus Mountains. This was one of the first attempts not only to reach the summit, but also to measure its height. Because of the fast climbing, Lentz felt the effects of altitude sickness. His eyes suffered most from the snow shining brightly. He was only 200 meters from the top, but in memory of his braveness, the spot on Mount Elbrus was named Lentz Peak. Lentz used the data collected during his two expeditions for the first university geography textbook in Russia. Upon returning to St. Petersburg, Heinrich began to climb the career ladder at a rapid pace. His research was accepted among the scientific society and he was elected academician at age 30. At that same time, Lentz happened to become a father. His son was named Robert in honor of Heinrich's younger brother, who subsequently became a famous physician. His main scientific achievement of these years was the discovery of the well-known rule of Lentz that determined the direction for induction current. Nine years later, as Dean of the Physics and Math Department, he formulated the law of correlation between electrical current power in conductors and the quantity of thermal units the conductor induced. James Prescott Joule, a scientist from Manchester, England, also made the same discovery independently. 
This is why the law of thermal effect of electric current is called the law of Joule Lenz. At the age of 50, Heinrich Lenz was elected rector of St. Petersburg University. He worked more than 12 hours a day conducting endless experiments. He wrote and read a lot of papers. It may have been that tense work that caused the rapid progression of his eye disease. At 60 years of age, the famous scientist was almost blind. He left St. Petersburg and went to Rome for therapy. After a year, the scientist could read and write again and even renewed his research. That improvement was only temporary. On February 10, 1865, Lentz died from a stroke. The scientist was buried in a Roman Protestant cemetery. His grave was abandoned for a long time. Several decades after it was found, a gravestone was erected in memory of Heinrich Lentz, an outstanding physicist, oceanographer, and traveler.